Welcome to Access to Perspectives Conversations, the podcast for bridging academic landscapes. At Access to Perspectives, we provide novel insights into the communication and management of research. Our goal is to equip researchers around the world with the skills and enthusiasm they need to pursue a successful career. You will get insights around the topics of scholarly reading, writing and publishing, career development, project management and research integrity, all embedded into open science practices. Learn more about our work at accesstoperspectives.org. Welcome, everyone. Here is another episode of Access to Perspectives um, Conversations, and we will converse today with Anya Harrison. Uh, welcome, Anya. It's great to have you. Hi, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we share a lot of interests, which we will dig into in just a few seconds. You are a lecturer and applied neuroscience program lead at King's College London, Mm -hmm. and many other things which everyone um, who's listening can read about in the show notes and the company podcast but we're here today um, for your project or initiative is, is more than that for mm -hmm. it's called the collaborative library and we are exploring ways how we can or we've already committed to partner to bring um yeah, to bring the the project to to wider attention and to fuse our collaborative efforts for the mm -hmm. purpose of the collaborative library. But yeah, tell us a bit more about the project idea behind how it evolved and what's now happening. Yeah, so I guess, so the collaborative library in a nutshell is supposed to become a repository of lay summaries of scientific articles that come with quality checklists and quality guides attached. So at the moment, we know there is, well, knowledge equity doesn't really exist to that extent, because we know lots of people who want to access science or want to understand the findings can't necessarily do so. So what we're trying to entice people is to create lay summaries and to also give a bit of context around like what kind of uh, quality uh, the underlying studies are. And then we basically take it from there. Um, I guess ultimately the idea came from me working a lot with people with chronic health conditions who wanted to access science, but they couldn't A, access the actual paper because of paywalls, or B, when they try to access them, they looked at them and they kind of went, I have no idea what that is about. So there's a bit of an element of us trying to address both of those challenges in one go. The other thing is, um, because obviously as part of my senior lecturer role and my program lead role at King's, what I find is universities, they spent a lot of time coming up with assessments, administering assessments, students that work on assessments, obviously trying to do well and pouring loads and loads of work into it. And then uh, we mark assessments. So there's loads of assessments that are happening already anyway. And what happens to those? Normally they go on a draw right they don't really do anything other than give students hopefully a good grade so what we're suggesting is basically to embed lay summary creation as an assessment process at different universities and thereby creating a motor of things basically ticking over and more and more content being created um this has a few different uh sort of upsides obviously student work goes to a good place Mm -hmm. which is something publishable and they can then also put that into their cvs and so on but also it enables the uh, lecturers for instance uh, who who put the coursework onto their um, modules they can select their own research to be summarized and create public interest public engagement as part of that so basically the students create the summaries and then the the staff marking they do the vetting because obviously we need to make sure that there's good quality stuff that goes on. Right. And thereby you have a little neat system where you can create more and more content that is hopefully going to be of good um, uh, content. I guess there's two arms. So there's creating the repository. And then of course, already alluded to it. We also provide lots of information around quality of paper, um, sort of know-how, if, if you will, like quality mm. checklists, what's peer uh, publications all about, ha what about the publishing landscape all altogether. So we're basically trying to educate people around all of that side of things too. So oh. when they look at stuff, mm -hmm. they'll understand better. Wow. Okay, that's like, sounds like a simple solution to a huge challenge or multiple challenges at academia mm. currently. 
So um, you mentioned equity, which is also mm -hmm. like a buzzword nowadays, it's easily said, um, difficult to do. Um, True. And in my context, when I talk about equity, I consider global research equity, yes. which also is part of your work, as we've discussed. Yes. Um, but primarily, you're looking towards providing equity to societal stakeholders to engage in scientific achievements. Yeah, I quite agree. I mean, you would have potentially, if you're following our social media feeds, you would have potentially also seen that we are, so obviously we're based in the UK currently, but what we're also trying to do is branch out into all different places across the world. Like for instance, we've recently involved the African Research Reproducibility Network, who we're extremely excited about the um, initiative. We've talked, we're talking to people from Norway. We're talking to people from all different, I mean, random places in the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously the US, the UK, we also have some people in Germany that we're getting involved with and so on. So what we're trying to do is build in the longer run, a really strong network of, of sort of organizations that are scattered across the world to make sure that this is, um, available, um, um, everywhere. It's obviously a slow and steady progress, as you will appreciate. The idea is a little bit that what we want to do is we want to create like easily accessible stuff that people can just click whilst they're brushing their teeth or perhaps they're cooking their dinner. Things that they can look at and they can chunk into sizable bits that they find manageable and that could and that obviously goes to lots of different people right so we, we could be talking about people in the public we could be even talking about school children who might want to learn about a topic that they're particularly interested considering mm. into going into later in their life or it could be people from different research disciplines i don't know if you found that i think you were mentioning earlier being a biologist to do with sort of like animals more so than plants and then if people ask you about plants you kind of go I don't know and I guess <laughs> we'll have those sort of like things don't we so I'm um, health psychology sort of background uh, psychoneuroimmunology background but then if someone asked me about something else in psychology I may go I might want to have to <laughs> take yeah. a moment and look that up so I think one of the things that we're also really priding ourselves in is that um, we're hoping to increase the communication between different disciplines as well because obviously we know that stuff that's going on in engineering will probably benefit a lot of people working in other fields but if they can't talk to each other because they don't know the words and they don't know the language or they even they don't even know it exists in the first place that type of research then how are we supposed to facilitate engagement i guess and that's one of the things that we're also trying to do sure well that sounds wonderful and um this is uh, just too many sides of my head now to uh, talk about and ask you. But um, so yeah, what's 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 currently boiling? What's next to be yeah. expected? How can people engage? So first of all, so there's a couple of different bits. So we have um, the goal of becoming sustainable. So sustainability is obviously linked in uh, with making sure that we have enough of an audience. So one of the things that we'd be very um, uh, excited to see is more and more people look at our social media pages. So the Collaborative Library LinkedIn page, the Collaborative Library Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. So people can start accessing our content and can start learning about the initiative a bit more. And also they can start consuming lay summaries, which are now sl slowly starting to uh, come in from uh, some of our participating organizations so that's something that an individual who has no in organizational links can do basically just follow us and mm -hmm. see what comes up if they're interested the other thing is um those people who perhaps have uh, institutional links um they can help us spread word of mouth so basically more people learn about us so what we're doing is and i should mention this if i haven't done so already this is a free thing so no one has to pay uh, what we're offering is for universities who wish to get involved is a free 
uh, assessment starter pack, if you will, where they get rubrics, they get a template brief, uh, and we've obviously prepared all of that stuff really nicely and co-produced with um, students so they can basically come and ask us for that information and then they can become a participating program uh, in our um, project and we can then um, guide them through the process of basically creating and uploading their own stuff. So that's something that we're always looking for. If you listen to this and you think, oh, this is great, I would love to use this kind of assessment, something that's meaningful, authentic and has so many upsides, then uh, you can get in touch with us uh, um, at hello at the collaborative library.com and we can set you up and um, the other thing for people who think well I think this is brilliant but I don't really have any direct institutional link but I'm maybe my own institution I don't know charity or professional organization you can also get in touch and we can partner up if our values align and this is what obviously we're going to do uh, mm -hmm. with access for perspectives as well so we're kind of like trying to build a really strong network of organizations that really share the same good core values around sort of equity and making sure that things are sort of like progressing in the right direction I guess um and also, if you're someone who has neither institutional links uh, nor uh, their own organization, but you kind of want to get involved still, then you can also email us uh, and you can also be on our uh, uh, volunteering working group, which basically means that you get to give input uh, and, and be a little bit part of the conversation around how we're shaping the platform going forwards. Nice. That's beautiful. And then, so... I, I just remembered being a researcher on my own, how difficult it might be to write an abstract to, for your manuscript, let alone mm -hmm. a lay summary, which mm -hmm. sounds trivial, but then we are all so much into our terminologies and acronyms and tech language that it's really oh, hard yeah. to step back and then find a way to summarize our research research findings in a way that's actually consumable yep. um, by a wider audience. So. Mm -hmm. So, so, but you mentioned you have a whole lot of guiding materials. Is there also hands-on trainings that that your team can yeah. provide, or yeah, yeah, it's a it's really good questions. So, I think one of the key things that we found when we looked at other websites that also host or um, uh, offer to host lay summaries is that there's virtually no guidance anywhere. So we thought we need to address that. So we've got a guide for authors, a little bit like what you expect from when you would publish a journal article. Mm -hmm. Same goes for a lay summary. But obviously what we're trying to do here is become more accessible and more, well, quite frankly, fun too. So we've also got a video where basically we, in a sort of like hopefully entertaining enough way, convey <laughs> what kinds of things you might want to have a look out for when you put together lay summaries. So yes, there is a guidance. Obviously we need to be a little bit cautious here because we know that there's, so at the moment there's no limit in terms of what types of scientific papers and, 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 and sort of areas we include. It's all across the board. And we do realize that someone that works in space engineering may have a very different type of um, uh, summary to provide and uh, uh, work on as opposed to someone who works in I don't know sociology perhaps so there is leeway but we basically have a guide that's supposed to sort of capture those things um, and the other thing is uh, yes the training we are very happy to provide training so what we do is we usually do it in a, like an online platform uh, kind of way where usually we use teams or zoom or similar mm -hmm. uh, and we tailor that to the the individual organization's needs so we've delivered one for um um uh, some of our um professional organizations that have uh, signed up already and we're still in the process of uh, delivering more and that's obviously always something that we can provide it depends a little bit on what the needs are and, mm. and who wants to get involved and how confident perhaps they feel how many people are involved those types of things but definitely yeah nice um let's 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 bring the whole well a couple of ideas that we should talk about afterwards <laughs> and suggest yeah um then like when you say interdisciplinary interdisciplinary exchange mm -hmm. like what i found the, the biggest barrier is um terminologies where yes. oftentimes similar similar exact same words are have different meanings mm -hmm. yes so do you or also have or build glossaries or do you rely yes. on the communities for that or yeah how, how's that yeah happen? so 
That's a really good point. I was actually having a conversation with someone recently about exactly this problem. So It's we not a have problem, a cost. it's a challenge. Well, Well, it's a challenge. I, it's a I challenge. like that. It's a positive reframing. No, it's a, a. I mean, initially, it looks. It's just confusing, isn't it? When you're talking about, uh, well, what looks to be the same thing, but it turns out to be completely different things. Um, but I think we already. So we already have a glossary on the page. However. It is limited currently. So what I guess we're trying to do in the longer run is sort of like add to it as we go along. This is something that we're very aware of and we're going to have to probably grow that glossary in line with what kinds of disciplines sign up. So just to give you a bit of an idea, at the moment we have lots of people sort of from a psychology background because probably that's where we started lobbying first, which makes sense. Uh, biomedical sciences are also sort of like starting to cotton on a little bit. And, that, and then very um, surprisingly, perhaps, uh, we have a lot of space engineers uh, because uh, we are uh, I am building a bit of a um, sort of partnership with Morabad Jha, who you may have heard of. He's a space environmentalist, very inspiring person. And um, together with them, Uh, they've brought in all these interest groups sort of from the space engineering background. I never even knew that space environmentalism was a thing until I saw uh, his keynote uh, um, uh, lecture uh, at an event. I I, that's just so curious. I mean, I am. Yeah, it's cool. Are they It's talking about decluttering space from all the... pretty much, yeah. And I didn't, I mean, if you, so it's one of those things, if you, If you'd rather live in blissful unawareness, then now's your chance. If you don't want to know about it, don't look it up. It's one of those things you can't unlearn. So, I mean, the amount of space junk is a bit of a shocker to my sister. I did, I was not aware how big this I know problem there is. is a lot of debris flying around from Yeah, space and debris yeah, and it's whatnot. considerable. But... And he's basically like, I don't know, I want to think of him almost like a, He's the person that kind of like tries to make this common knowledge and he is lobbying a lot for like changing this because there's a, currently there's like no regulation around like what you can send up there. Basically, most people just kind of like send stuff up. That's like one use. And it's just, Why we haven't I mean, thought of nuclear waste going out there? I know, I know. It's a, sh yeah, it's We're a shocker. putting this out there for anyone to take up the idea. I know. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's awful, isn't it? But I guess so. Obviously, I don't have nearly as much knowledge about all of this uh, in comparison to Moriba, obviously. But I think it's an interesting one because this platform really. Um, and this is a really good example of like interdisciplinary sort of like chat arising from a platform like this, because obviously this is, I never thought I was going to have much direct contact with space related uh, science, but there we are. <laughs> It's happening. I feel like now, So. now I'm thinking the Fridays for Futures movement and demonstrations should take this up as well. Because like, Yeah. let's, let's, let's take care of Earth and anything around us because we've already... It it makes sense. It does, doesn't it? But I think it's, it's just also, I mean, just having the knowledge of these things. And I think that's the kind of clever thing that our platform can do. It can kind of like bridge gaps that you didn't even know existed before you start bridging them. And it's a really, I mean, it has a lot of potential. I can see this like being so useful. I mean, imagine being a student and wanting to learn about something and then you have it not sort of like, weirdly summarized by someone online who has no idea about context but actually from the original paper and you also have the tools available to help you judge the quality of this and to really like almost like build your own understanding and your own way of sort of like critically looking at the actual evidence as opposed to all this unsolicited sort of information that unfortunately is available mm. out there i think one of the key drivers of all of this has also been um, what we saw during the pandemic, which was a lot of people kind of going and turning to sources that were perhaps not very reputable and building like really strong views on certain topics around um, COVID, obviously, but also other topics. And I think there's a real dearth of like properly reputable sources that you can turn to and you know that what you're going to find on there is actually vetted content and of good quality and i think that's one of the key things that we're hoping to to achieve Yeah. going forward i would love to spend more time on exactly how you ensure 
quality and integrity in that because it's kind of a challenge, like more widely spoken. But and I I'm a firm defendant of researchers per se. I believe that, and I'm convinced. Believing is not knowing, but I'm convinced that ninety nine point how many percentages after the comma. Um, of the researchers are committed to only share what's actually true, you know, they're not fabricating data because there's now this huge debate about our integrity and there's so much data fabrication and what paper myths is and that. Of course, we have issues, but it's not blame the majority who's just doing hard work yeah. for society's benefits. But but there are issues, and let's let maybe look towards another conversation where we dig more into that. But now this is such a great initiative and project and highly needed in times of well, also misinformation here and there and people having doubts and not believing oh is climate change no man-made or not still like really but <laughs> can't you see it in your backyard already <laughs> but um yeah so i think like no, I'm I'm so excited about what's next for our collaboration and to hear more about. And thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, likewise. Yeah, I'm very excited too. And thanks for having me and giving me a bit of a well forum to to sort of talk about the project. And uh, I hope that whoever has listened to this or or uh, watched this uh, will see some value in it. So perhaps follow us uh, if you're interested. Yeah, we'll find all the links in the notes. Do you want to? Well, mention the website just as a... Yeah, uh, the website is called uh, www.thecollaborativelibrary.com. Yes, so go explore and um, stay tuned for more. Thanks, Anya. Thank you. Thanks for joining us to listen to this episode. Do let us know what you think. You can email us or connect with us on our social media channels, which you can find on our website at accesstoperspectives.org. Email us at info at access to perspective.org or book a call to explore how we can support you with your research planning, management and publishing. Welcome you again soon for our next episode. Until then, have a great time. <laughs>